It's so good to see your beautiful faces. It's family day weekend. Are you guys excited? Yes, you should be excited. But apart from family day, what did we just celebrate a couple of days ago? Well, some of you celebrated with going out for dinner, flowers, right? I celebrated preaching here on Friday night. Um, uh, but guys, who are the guys that went out and bought flowers? Okay, no, you don't have to show your hands just in case. You want to embarrass the other guys that didn't, right? But I have news for you, not to take the romance out of it or anything, but just so you know, yesterday flowers were half price. I'm sorry, girls. Weren't those roses gorgeous? Yeah, I know. Just enjoy them. You know what's really good? Chocolate is good. Anybody who knows me knows I like chocolate, right? You know what kind of chocolate? Okay, Joey, calm down there. <laughs> Zazu bean, fair trade, organic, 90% cocoa, sugar-free, soy-free, peanut-free, everything free. You might as well just pick the cocoa bean off the tree and pass it to me. I'll chew on it. But that's my chocolate. But guys, it's really, it's really great to celebrate love, isn't it? Who doesn't love love? Okay, I saw one hand go up. We'll talk after, sir. But here's, I, I, a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago, no, maybe about a week ago? No, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I'm up in the kitchen and I'm cooking while he's down in the family room staring at me, you know, playing on his phone. <clears throat> now you know who cooks in the family. But anyway, all of a sudden I'm there and I'm going, this thing called love. Oh. Yeah, man. Like I'm like, and he's, my husband's, um, stand up, stand up, Norman. Let everybody see who my husband is. <laughs> and he's looking at me. <laughs> He's looking at me and he's chuckling away. And I said to him, I said, wait, that, that must be an Elvis song, right? And he's like, no, no, no. You want to know anything about music? You ask this man. I kid you not. I wish we could make money with the knowledge he has on music. Seriously. But he, and he says to me, well, he tells me who wrote the song, right? Freddie Mercury. So I'm like, I can't say that in church. But, oh, I just said it. But anyway... I was just singing this song, and I felt the Holy Spirit start to minister to me in the midst of that song. And he's saying, Lillian, this crazy thing called love, what's about it? Come on, are we okay to talk about this crazy little thing called love? Yeah, man, it's a four-letter word that we can say in church. Yeah. So, I don't know what you guys are thinking about. Let's talk about this thing called love. I know that as believers, we are really secure in our love, right? You go around telling people you love them, you tell your spouses, you tell your kids, right? You got it down pat because we know Jesus and we know what Jesus said about love. What did Jesus say about love? In Luke 10, 27, Jesus was asked a question and he answered and he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Come on, touch your heart, say all your heart. With all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Man, I don't know. That's a pretty high calling. I have trouble loving on a regular basis. Anybody else have that? No, you must live in a perfect world. You know, somebody cuts me off on the highway. I tell you, I, I got to dig deep to find the love there. But anyway... Some of us do it really, really well, and some of us still struggle with it. Like, how can you love with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul? That's really hard. Anybody else find that hard? Yeah, man, it's hard. But here's the thing. Jesus was driving home a message to challenge us in how we love, but he's also wanting us to understand how he loves and how his father loves, who is also our father. Because you see, to the extent that we will love God and love others is to the extent we'll love ourselves. Got that? That's what he's saying. So Jesus is trying to help us to understand how to love and how to receive love. Do you know that everybody gives and receives love differently? 
No matter how many times we get this message into our, into our brain and into our hearts, we still struggle with how we give love and how we receive love. I want us to look at a scripture where Jesus is asking some questions of, of someone. It's found in John 21. Jesus has been crucified, and the disciples, some of the disciples got a little disappointed. Some of them went off fishing. They're out fishing all night. They're looking in the morning. They see a man standing on the beach, and uh, well, it wasn't really a beach, but you know, on the seashore. And he says, hey, boys, catch anything? And they turned and said, nope, been fishing all night. We caught nothing. So Jesus said, throw your net on the other side. They throw their net. They realize they've got a huge catch. And then all of a sudden, John says to Peter, it's the Lord. They jump out. Anyway, they come on shore. They have a nice, beautiful breakfast. Jesus is cooking fresh fish and bread on the seashore for them. And they all eat. Who loves fish and bread for breakfast? Yeah, I can eat almost anything for breakfast. Yeah, fish and bread works for me. And Jesus then turns, they have a lovely meal, and then Jesus turns to Peter and he says, and in verse 15 it says, when they had finished eating, Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. In 16, he says, again, Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him this three times. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Why is Jesus asking Peter this question? There's a whole theological reason for why he's asking. But just think about it. Somebody asks you if you love them. What are you going to say? You're going to say what's in your heart, right? You're going to say, yes, I love you, or you might kind of skirt around it. But here, Jesus is asking, and Peter keeps saying yes. Why did Jesus not ask John this question? Well, because all the disciples have been spending time with Jesus. They had equal time except for three of his closest disciples. They were with him more often than the others, like John and Peter. And they have been taught about love. John is described as the disciple whom Jesus loved. John learned how to love from being with Jesus to the extent that he got so comfortable he put his head on Jesus' chest while they were sitting at the dinner table. And he's described as the disciple that Jesus loved. By the way, you don't need to be jealous. Jesus loves all of us, okay? Not just John, but he loves all of us. So what exactly was going on between Peter and Jesus here? One reason is that Jesus was preparing Peter to lead the church. He was starting to raise up Peter to say, I want to know. When he says, feed my lambs, he was giving Peter the command and he was give, commissioning him to go and lead the church. Another reason why he was doing this is because Jesus was bringing redemption to Peter. If you've read the Bible or if you haven't, I'll just back it up a little bit. Just before Jesus was crucified, before he was arrested and crucified, Jesus prophesied over Peter and he said, because Peter said, everybody will, will leave you, but I'll never leave you. And Jesus prophesied over Peter and he says, before the cock crows, uh, crows, you would have denied me knowing me three times. And in this instance, Jesus is lifting off that guilt off of Peter. He's trying to lift that off so that Peter can see who he really is and what his destiny is meant to be. Come on, are you excited for your destiny? Do you want some redeeming love in your heart today? This is what Jesus is doing. You see, Jesus and Peter are using a different language. Back in the day, ancient Greek, ancient Greeks had several words for love. As if love isn't complicated enough, they needed like seven words, right? And this is what Peter and, and, and Jesus are talking about. You see, um, they use different words to describe different kinds of love. Like the Greeks call storge love is a special love between family members. You've got eros love. We just finished Valentine's. Eros, lots of eros love going around. That's romantic love. 
And Jesus and Peter are using this in the context of ancient Greek words. Gary Smalley wrote an incredible book. He's uh, written a lot on marriage. He wrote a book called The Five Love Languages. Anybody ever read that? Before my husband and I got married, we intentionally got a hold of that book and we read it because we needed to understand how we were going to give and receive love from each other in our marriage. So can I say to you, my husband's not just a high contemplator. His uh, primary love languages are spending quality time together and touch. So we will sit on the couch and he'll be there on his computer, I'll be reading whatever we're doing. And if I sit on that couch with him for hours and ever so periodically I'll reach over and touch him and rub his arm, he's the happiest guy in the world. My primary, one of my primary languages is um, words of affirmation. So while he's sitting there and enjoying himself, I'm sitting there going like, okay, when are you ready to talk? When are we gonna have a little chit chat here? And he's a happy little guy. He's got his two little love languages met, right? Jesus and Peter are using two different words. When Jesus asked Peter, if you love me, he was asking a word called agape. What is agape? Agape is a complete, beautiful, unconditional love that is given to us by God so that we can love others and it transcends our own ability to love. Anybody have trouble loving? Wow, you guys, you guys are all perfect. I'm gonna have to chat with you later. So that's the love that Jesus is asking Peter. Do you love me, this unconditional, beautiful love that God has given you in your heart? What Peter is responding to is something called phileo, and that is brotherly love. It comes from phileo, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. It's that's how Peter's responding. Hey, I love you, bro, you know? You know what, what kind of love that is? So brotherly love is somebody who will come and help you move a couch around in your house. And I don't think that uh, Jonatus is there moving that couch. But anyway, uh, that kind of love, filial, brotherly love, will come and help you move a couch somewhere from one room to another in your house. Do you know what agape love does? Comes and helps you move your whole house. The whole house, all your furniture, that's what it does. That's the extent and that's the intensity of the love that they're having this discussion about. You know when you, the difference between agape and filial love, you know when you look at somebody and you go, I love you. And they pat you on the back and they go, yeah, I, I you know, I, I think you're great too. And you step out and you go, oh my gosh, talk about vulner vulnerability remorse. Like I just opened up my heart to you and you're like, pat me on the back. Yeah, um, yeah, bro, bro, uh, sis, I'm not a bro, I'm a sis. Um, yeah, I think you're really great too. That's what filial love looks like. That's what is happening between Jesus and Peter. There are certain people in this church, and this morning one of them came to me. Let me tell you about our church. Well, I'll tell you about our church later. But in this church, I have some women that will come up to me. They'll grab a hold of me. They'll look me in the eyes and they'll go, I really, 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 really love you. And they'll hug me really, really tight. I'm looking for some of them. I can't see them right now. But they'll do that, hold me really tight. There is nothing there is no personal space in this church, okay guys? Get used to it. People are gonna grab you, they're gonna hug you, and they're gonna tell you they love you. Don't you love a church like that? No personal space, we don't have that. What is happening with Peter? Let's try and understand Peter. Peter's a Jewish man. He's born into a male-dominant culture. He is a fisherman. He is, he is vacillating between faith and doubt all the time. Jesus is continually trying to draw him back into the place of love. You know, culture is very difficult to change. It's almost easier to get an Alaskan to live in the Sahara Desert than it is to change culture. But you know what? It's possible. And it's doable. I come from a culture. I'm a Trini. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah, man. I'm a Trini, okay? I come from a culture where we don't talk about love and we don't get all gushy all the time. We'll talk about everything else. We'll talk about every other topic, right? No filters whatsoever. But we don't go around gushing over each other about how much we love each other, right? We will talk about other topics. We will have impassionate discussions and we fight for one another. I tell you, you touch one of ours, man, we're all over you like flies on honey with lots of love. And we love Jesus. 
But that's the culture it is. We don't have to vocalize it, but we understand love. And everybody receives and gives love differently. Of course, you have Peter now, who's a fisherman. He's spending a lot of time on a boat. You think about that. Any fisherman around? Not you, Curtis. Any fisherman around you? Curtis, he's, uh, he's a breed of a different kind. This guy goes ice fishing tomorrow. But anyway, any fishermen around us? So he's a fisherman, and he's out in the waters. He's got a lot of time to think. He's thinking about a lot of things. When's Messiah going to come? When are we going to get free from the Romans? He's thinking, you know, as a Jewish man being trained up in, in Jewish culture, he has all kinds of thoughts going on. I remember, I don't know if you guys know um, or were here, but in the early years of this church, we had um, a pastor that used to come from North Carolina. His name is Jack Frost. Anybody remember Jack Frost? We used to call him Jack, call him Jack the Ripper because he would rip your heart out with the stories, not, not in a bad way, in a good way. And I remember Jack saying, he was a fisherman. He was fishing off the coast of North Carolina a lot. He was always trying to make top hook. But he said because he did not know love, did not receive love, and he did not want to contend with his overachieving athletic brother who seemed to receive all the love from the father and Jack got none, he would go off into a boat and go fishing for days. And he would stay out there, and the only time he'd come home is when he knew he was going to come home with something that he had achieved so that he could earn the love of his father. That is the kind of mentality that we are talking about with Peter here. What else is going on in Peter's heart? Peter had denied Jesus, knowing Jesus, three times. He's carrying a lot of guilt inside of him. And he, in this time when Jesus is asking, do you love me? Peter's still carrying that kind of guilt in his heart. He doesn't know how to get free of it because he has not come into the depths of the love that Jesus has been trying to impart to his disciples throughout his ministry on the earth. But here's the thing, guys. Love is redeeming. Yes. It redeems. It comes and it brings us out of the darkest places. Love comes and propels us into places that we will never think or expect that we can go. When we know how much God loves us and when we carry that depth of love inside of us, we are almost, we are almost invincible. Come on, turn to somebody and say, you're invincible. Thank you, Jesus. Love forgives. Love forgives. Love forgives. I want to tell you, my husband and I, we don't, we don't argue a lot. <laughs> we have robust discussions. We don't fight. We have robust discussions. My husband is a consummate carnivore. He's Scottish born, meat and potatoes, mince and toddies. Anybody know what mince and toddies are? Anyway, if you don't, I make it. And don't ever put anything green on his plate. <laughs> Nothing green. It's okay, I hide it in the smoothies. <laughs> and he detests bok choy. I love bok choy. He detests bok choy. Can I say to you that if my husband walks in the door one day and I'm cooking fish, he knows that that evening we're gonna have a robust discussion. <laughs> if he walks in the door and I'm cooking fish and bok choy, <laughs> he knows it's gonna be a really, really long night. <laughs> but here's the thing, in the midst of our discussion, it doesn't mean that I don't love him, actually I heiress him, right? And as soon as he admits that he's wrong, we're good to go. Right? Like I, you know, because the scripture said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, right? Don't go to bed angry. So I'll keep him up while his eyes are like, you know, and, and it's like, sweetie, I got to go to work in the morning. Yeah, but we got we to gotta sort this out, man, because you know what the scripture say, don't let the, wrath, the sun go down on your wrath, right? People receive and give love differently. It doesn't mean it's not genuine. Turn to somebody and say, I love you as much as I can love you right now. And if they're a stranger to you, just say, hey, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. We need to know where people are at. We need to be transparent. We need to talk it through. We need 
to speak words that will bring freedom to people so they, that they can walk in the level of love that they have arrived at because we haven't all arrived at that place. Jesus, come. I want to say, Ho shatarabasanda. Sometimes love looks differently than we need it to see it look. Do you know that? Listen, they're in the garden. The guards have come to arrest Jesus and to take him, to crucify him. What happens? Peter, now here's the thing. There's a reason why Peter, the theologians say that Peter pulls out a sword and he cuts off the ear of one of the soldiers that came to arrest Jesus. And, and the theologians will say, you know, well, yeah, Peter thought it was time for the revolution. They'd been waiting for the Messiah to come. And all of a sudden, here he is. And in the garden, Peter's like, right, it's time for revolution. Because he's going to come and lead a revolution to set the Jewish people free. They're in the garden, and he cuts off somebody's ear. It, it, yeah, yeah. Peter did that because of love. He loved Jesus. He had been around Jesus I believe that he did it out of a place of love. They're coming to take my master. I love him. Even though in this scripture where Jesus is questioning him about love, Peter carries a level of love inside of him. Do you know that each one of us carries a level of love inside of us? We do. Whether it is described as 100% or 50%, we have love inside of us. And we need to validate it by being the people that we are and, and, and exhibiting that love. I know that time is going really quickly, but I want to say, Peter did it because of love. You can't be with Jesus and not know love. He had spent so much time with Jesus. Jesus had poured himself into Peter. Regardless of what was going on in his heart, Peter received a level of love. Sometimes love looks, love looks like honey dripping all over you. Sometimes love looks like a pot of chicken soup being delivered to your door on a cold winter's day. Sometimes love looks, love looks like saying goodbye to an unhealthy relationship. And sometimes love looks like a sword. Because the Lord comes along with his sword and he wields it in the face of the enemy for you and protects. And that's what Peter was doing. He was demonstrating his love for Jesus when he grabbed that sword and he sliced off that ear. What does love look like? Love wears different hats sometimes. Paul said, I have come, I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. That's how Paul reflected and demonstrated love. In this church, I want to say that we, we exhibit and we love you. If you don't believe it, I want to say, approach one of us and you will see the love that we have for you. We stand at that door on Sunday mornings. I'm going to say, I was going to say something about that on Sunday morning, but I want to say, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> What's this crazy little thing called love? Jesus said love, to love God and love others. How do you love others? How do you love others? Mm. It's family day weekend. I want to say to you that everybody that walks in that door, we want you when you walk into this building to know what love is. We want you to know that you are precious and that you are welcome here. When we stand at the door and we are shaking hands and we're welcoming you in, we are giving you our whole hearts to the extent that we know how to love. We are giving it to you. We never want anybody to walk into this house and leave without experiencing love. I want to uh, close right now with something. Forgiveness clears the way for the love train. I know that not all of us were taught how to love, and we can only give to the extent that we have experienced it ourselves. I want to say to you in this house today that there is love. We want your first experience in this house to be love. We want the enduring experience of you every time you walk in that door. If you walk in that door and I'm greeting and all of a sudden you see me dash off into another direction, I'm not trying to avoid you. I am called to something else where somebody needs to be loved more. Next Sunday, I'll give you two hugs at the front door. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. I want to, I want to talk to you about um, Kobe Bryant. You guys know Kobe Bryant? Just recently, 
right? Tragically, he and his beautiful little daughter lost their lives along with seven more precious lives in that helicopter uh, crash. But here's the thing, guys. Do you know that for many years, Kobe Bryant was estranged from his parents? Do you know they didn't attend his wedding because they had been apart? But during the time when his first child was born, they, they reconciled with one another and they started to have a relationship. Families are not perfect. We have dynamics that take place among us. But here's a good thing, guys. To the extent that we know how to love, we need to display that love and to show it until agape love starts to overtake us. I want us to be very mindful today that some of us, for the, for the word family, may not have a good meaning. It may not always engender beautiful feelings inside of your heart. But today, I want to say to you that it's a great opportunity for you to step out, to be the one to step out to a family member and say, you know what? I know that I don't demonstrate love the way that you need to see it, but I want you to know that I still carry it inside of me. For many of us, for many of us, love is such an incomprehensible word. We didn't experience it as children. For many of us, love is a word that was defiled because it was used in the wrong context to, to, to convey a message that was trying to show love, but it didn't succeed. We need to take an opportunity this weekend. I just really feel and sense right now that some of us in this room need to make some phone calls. You need to allow the agape love of Christ to come into your heart and make a phone call and say, you know what? I, I don't know. I just, I just got the sense that somebody here is estranged from a daughter. And it's been a very, very hard road for you. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is saying that today is the day. Today's the day, and it doesn't matter who makes the first step. Do you know with love, it doesn't matter. It's just making the first step. And sometimes it takes one person to move in that direction, and then you see a movement. It's like a whole army of love coming back at you. Today's the day. Today's the day. We are, we are celebrating Family Day. I want to say to you, that love, whether you comprehend it, whether you carry it, whether you demonstrate it well, today's a day to make agreement that you will take love into your heart and that you will give it to other people. Do you know that used to be the motto in our, in our church here? To receive God's love and give it away to Toronto and, and the rest of the world. Today, I really believe that the Holy Spirit wants us to take a step in the right direction, regardless of what's happened, regardless of what kind of issues you've had within your families, today's a day for peace and today's a day to demonstrate love. Come on, are you ready to do that? Come on, let's stand up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I implore you this morning. There is always something good to remember about someone and about family. I'm asking you today. You know, Jesus himself has a family, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I don't know what family looks like to you. And maybe for you, it's been defiled a little bit. But I want to tell you today that Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are the perfect. They are the perfect representation of family. I want to say if you've been hurt, if you feel that you do not have any more love in your heart to give, I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit of God is here today. And he is able to do amazingly wonderful things to bring reconciliation and to bring life and to bring love back. We belong to a family in heaven. Do you know that? God gave us, gave us our own families on the earth, but we have an ultimate family in heaven. We have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And for some of us, we don't know what that means because we have not experienced love. But I want to say to you that the love of Christ is perfect. Do you know how perfect the love of Jesus is? His love is so perfect that he gave up everything. He gave up his divinity. He came as a human being in the flesh to demonstrate love. And you know how he did that? He did it on the cross. He hung on that cross to say, this is how much I love you. 
That's how much I love you. And I don't know what your experience has been. And I don't know what pain you're carrying in your heart. And I don't know how love was demonstrated to you. But today, I believe that you're about to experience the best and most perfect love of all, all time. His name is Jesus. I believe that there are people in this room right now that your, your, your brain is going tick, 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 tick. You are feeling the presence of God on your body. And the Holy Spirit is whispering in your heart. And he's saying, do you want to experience perfect love? You see, because human beings are broken, we all make mistakes. We come from brokenness. From the Garden of Eden, we came out of brokenness. But there's a perfect one that came to redeem us from the brokenness. And he carries perfect love in his heart for every one of us. Today, I'm going to invite you. If you've not experienced perfect love, I want you to know that Jesus hung on that cross for you and for you and for you and for you and for me. He demonstrated love on that cross because he wants you to experience perfect love and only through Jesus can we experience perfect love. Today the Father is calling you home. Today the Father is saying, come. I want you. I want to introduce you to my son because he gave it all up for you so that you would experience perfect love. And I know that there are some of us in this room today and we've heard it. And we've heard all the religious words, the gospel being preached. And I'm not making fun. It is the gospel being preached. And we've heard religious words about this. But the simplicity of it all is just that Jesus loves you. And he died on that cross so that you would know what perfect love is when you come to the Father through him. So today, I'm going to say, do a brave thing. We got lots of fun for you afterwards. Give us one more moment. Do a brave thing. I want to see, by show of hands, who would say today, I want to know that perfect love. I want to meet Jesus. I see a hand back there. Yes. I see hands. Yes. I see your hands. Yes. All over this room, I want to introduce you to perfect love this morning. I want you to know that no matter what happens going forward from your life, today you're going to experience perfect love and it's going to take you through the course of your entire existence on the face of the earth because Jesus loves you. I'm going to ask, listen, if you came with a friend, just turn to your friend right now and say, hey, if you want to go up there, I'll go with you. Come on, turn to your friend. Take a moment. Guys, this is a precious, this is a holy moment. Jesus is calling. He's saying, I'm here for you. I want to demonstrate perfect love to you. I'm going to ask those guys. Come on. If somebody says yes, they want that perfect love, take their hand, bring them up here. We got Pastor Curtis and the team. We want to pray for you guys. What better day than family day to say yes. I'm going to give my life to Jesus today. I want to experience that perfect love. Come on up. I saw those hands. Come on, church family. Let's start. to. Come on, guys. Come on. I saw your hands. Just come. Holy Spirit is waiting here for you. Jesus wants to meet you. And Jesus wants to give you that perfect love. I saw a few more hands. Come on up. We just want to pray for you. We want to introduce you to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We want to introduce you. Come on up, sir. Come on up. Come on up. Here you come. Yes, come. Don't let this day pass, friends. It's the most incredible, most beautiful day that you will ever experience in your life because you're going to meet pure love. Love is waiting for you here, guys. That's love. So come on up. Come on up, honey. Just come on up. Come on. Let's come this way. Come on. There you go. Let's come on. Let's encourage them. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling this morning. He wants your heart. He wants to give you a fuller life, an abundant life. He, want to bring, he wants to show you what real love looks like. So today, I want to bless you as you come to say yes to Jesus. I know there's some more hands. So I'm going to say for those of you that raise your hands and you haven't come up, find one of us that's in the front row and up here. Just find us. We just want to love you. And we want to demonstrate Jesus to you. And we want to help you to have the best life that you could ever have on planet Earth. Thank you, guys. God bless you.